Hello, I'm Chris Hansen, and this is my sheep brain practical. The first thing I'd like to point out is the outer meninges, uh, the dura matter, arachnoid matter, and pia matter. So it looks like on this specimen, the dura matter was kind of stripped away already. You can see a little bit, you can get my probe underneath here, right here, the arachnoid and pia matter. The dura matter stands for tough mother. Uh, the arachnoid matter um, is called that because it's uh, web-like. And the pia matter is thin, delicate, and plays a special role in the blood-brain barrier. First off, let's talk about the cerebrum, cerebral cortex, this part here, the biggest part in mammals. Um, if you notice, they have sulky and gyri. Sulky are grooves, and the gyri are the ridges. Uh, there's a prominent one here. Longitudinal fissure going down the center here. I cut down that so I could expose the inside. So the four lobes of the brain, we have the frontal lobe here, and that is mostly for motor functions. We have the parietal lobe which is more up here, and that is for uh, somatic sensory information. We have the temporal lobe, which you can see is defined here and on the other side. And that uh, receives and processes auditory information. And then we have the occipital lobe. If you notice, they're all named after the bones, uh, the occipital lobe. And that receives and processes uh, visual sensation for the eyes. So I'll turn this over here. All right, so the cerebellum, that's this guy right here. He controls muscle coordination. Uh, thalamus, which is this guy right here. And he's a sensory relay center for most of the brain. Underneath the thalamus, we have the hypothalamus. And he's responsible for... Uh, homeostasis, body temperature, appetite, fluid intake. Together, they're called diencephalon. And next to the hypothalamus, we have the midbrain right here. And after the midbrain, we have the pons. And the pons is an important nerve tract connecting uh, the cerebellum with other parts of the brain and spinal cord. After the pons, we have the medulla oblongata, and that controls heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, uh, reflex centers for coughing, sneezing. And then from that, we have the spinal cord. So there's 12 pairs of nerves that leave the brain. Uh, if you look here, you can see, see some remnants of nerves. One of the main ones is the olfactory bulb, the nerve coming out here. And the olfactory bulb would be here. Uh, the olfactory bulb contains neurons that synapse with other olfactory nerve neurons. Olfactory being your smell. The next thing I want to show you is the optic chiasma. So I'll put these together to make it a little bit easier to see. You can see this pattern here that kind of looks like an X. The uh, It's cut off here, the nerves. But this is where your eyes... Uh, the nerves for your optic nerves can switch sides. Next, I want to show you the uh, corpus callosum, which is this white band here. And that connects the two uh, cerebral hemispheres so that they can talk from one side to the other. So there's four fluid-filled ventricles inside the brain. Um, one and two, we, we can't see very well with this cut, but we have four here. This is the fourth ventricle, this open space. And that leads to the cerebral aque aqueduct here, which is the space here. And the third ventricle is right above the thalamus. So that would be here. And if you look really closely here, you can see choroid plexus, which 
has little capillaries that produce the CSF or the cerebral spinal fluid. So if we look here, we can see the pineal body of the pineal gland, which is an endocrine gland that secretes serotonin. So the hypophysis, which is the pituitary gland, uh, sometimes called the master gland, it controls um, many endocrine glands. Um, that would be here, but it was cut off, it looks like. And the last thing I want to show you is, so we cut this hemisphere in half again. So you can see the gray and white matter on the inside of the brain. The gray matter is on the outside and the white matter is on the inside. And it's actually opposite of this way in the spinal cord. The gray matter is mainly unmyelinated axons, cell bodies, and dendrites, while the white matter is myelinated, and that's what gives it its white color.